So is this brave new world of technology all it really is cut out to be? I'll talk about that. Also, State Senator Mary Jo White is joining us tonight on Feedback. All right, like I've been sa said to you last night, I've been tearing stuff out of the paper that I need to talk to you about, and it's about this brave new world of technology. Talk about that in a minute. But first of all, welcome to tonight's edition of Feedback. I'm Mark Despedagas. Joining us in just a few minutes will be State Senator Mary Jo White. But first, on to my uh, rant topic for the evening. Uh, something that was in the New York Times uh, early January. There is this, it was in the, the technology section, the Thursday they do a section called Circuits, I believe, about all this new technology that's out. And it's a chair that, you know, I guess somehow you hook up to your TV set, and when, like if you're watching a football game, whenever they hit each other, like there's a smash, you feel it in your chair, and it works for anything. So if you're watching, you know, like the, the pretend wrestling, and they punch each other, you'll feel the chair move. I think this is really very strange. It's called the, in, the Intensor LX Gaming Chair. It is um, $170, and you can order it online. And I just think it's, it is, it's really, really strange. And it, it scares me this is what technology has come to. You know, we have all this technological advances in the world, and this is what we're using it for. We're putting our resources in making a chair that whenever someone gets hit on the screen, you feel it. That that's been bothering me. Also, something else about technology that's really been bothering me is we've seen this proliferation of things like AOL, AOL Instant Messenger and all these type of instant messaging programs, and it's, there, no, there's no more personal contact anymore. No one actually talks to each other. I, I live in a residence hall here at the university, and the way people talk to each other, like the people in the room next door or across the hall, is they sign onto the computer and talk to them. Like, I'm not exaggerating on this. This is a factual statement. And I think it's very strange. Um, I've actually protested. Like, I used to have the instant messenger on my computer so I could talk to friends who were at other schools. And I just, I, I totally deleted it off of the computer because I've, I've seen what it's become. This is what, this is rules people's lives. They come in, the first thing they do, like the jacket's not even off and hung up and they're turned on the computer because they have to talk to people on the, the computer. I think it is really, really strange because this is what we do for contact now. There is no more human interaction. I mean, I'm sure you witnessed it. You go to a store and everybody just walks down this way and walks down the aisle. There is no hello, how are you? When you check out, you put, scan the stuff, put it in the bag and go home. There is no talking. You, you, you don't see that anymore and it's, it scares me. You don't even see people calling each other on the phone anymore because they're talking on this, these instant messaging programs, which I understand are a good thing because say I have a relative in California and I want to talk to them, that's good for something if I want, maybe want to tell them something real short. But if I want to you know, talk for a, a long duration of time, I actually want to hear the person's voice. I mean, that's the whole wonderful thing of human contact. You know, we're all humans. We want to talk to each other. So this instant messaging craze and this whole, everything that's going on in technology. So for all of you out, out there who think that technology is this wonderful thing that it's, it's come to save us and it's making our lives easier. I think in a lot of ways it's making our lives easier, but I don't necessarily think it's making our lives better. So the next time you sign on to that to talk to the person down the hall, think of me yelling at you because I think it is very, very strange. So that is uh, what I want to talk to you about this for this week. We're going to take a break and when we come back, we're going to be talking to State Senator Mary who is on feedback. crime is no accident. Programs like mentoring, job training, counseling, along with after-school activities are keeping kids away from crime and crime away from kids. Look around. You'll see that kids involved in these kinds of prints are kids who are staying out of trouble. It takes you 
and programs that work. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT and we'll send you a free booklet. Call now and help take a bite out of crime. Do you know who I am? Am I a P or a D? A Q, perhaps? Or a B? <laughs> I am dyslexia, and millions of kids struggle with me every time they read. Call now to help your child manage his learning disability. There's no reason to be held back. And I said, you know, it wasn't a better name for a movie to come out now, and I think I'm going to make the movie or write the book. It would be a great book to have, and you can uh, call uh, to get her book. Um, you can also find it online. Well, I have a feeling I'm going to be rather opinionated. People I know, so let's ask them about scheduling. Um, why, is it, why is it that students have such a problem here with Tune in to Feedback with Mark Despotakis every Tuesday and Wednesday night, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Because we're totally out of time, no time to talk to you. We'll see you tomorrow. Welcome back to Feedback. I'm Mark Despedagas. Joining us today is State Senator Mary Jo White. Thank you for joining us today. You're the Pleasure from the uh, 21st District. Right. What's that? We're 21st District is all of Clarion County, about half of Venango, uh, the southern half, Franklin on down, mm -hmm. Utica. Um, it's part of Lawrence County, excluding Newcastle, going all the way over to New Wilmington, and. Uh, all of Butler County with the exception of Cranberry and Adams Townships in the south. So it's a big district. Right. It's about a quarter of a million people. And uh, since it's a rural district, it covers a lot of space. Right. Um, so you're in the state senate running uh, for re-election coming up in the April 4th primary. Mm -hmm. um, looking back at, at your, your first term in office now, what, what have been some of the highlights? What have been some of the most memorable things? Um, well, the first one was getting the weather transmitters uh, so that our region is now fully covered by the uh, warning systems of the National Weather Service. I, that, that was a, my first win, I suppose you'd call it. Uh, another bill that I, that I sponsored and really felt very strongly about was the bill reducing the amount of time that children spend in foster care. Uh, now, if a child has been in foster care for a specified period out of the past two years, uh, you must begin permanency hearings, meaning either those parents get serious about parenting mm -hmm. or you, you uh, terminate parental rights and move the child into a permanent home. And it's already um, being used in, in the county courts and I'm very happy about so it that. working successfully? Uh, you know, foster care was never meant to be a place where a child waits out their childhood. It was meant mm -hmm. to be a temporary situation. And when you've got kids who've been in foster care for three and four years, uh, bounced back and forth and moved around, that's not the way for a child to grow up. So I was real happy about that, Bill. Right. Uh, looking now to the future, uh, what, what, um, what can we expect coming up if, if you're reelected for the next four years? Well, I wish I could say I'd be setting the agenda for the <laughs> next four years. Uh, we all. I think that uh, we are going to have to do something about property taxes and tax reform. Uh, we have a lot of work to do on education. Uh, and I'm talking about principally about elementary education and, and, uh, and how we're going to uh, raise the bar, if you will. Uh, there will still be a lot of tax issues. I think a lot of it will depend on how the economy looks over the next four years. Certainly if we continue uh, as we have been, uh, I think we have some wonderful opportunities to tackle some old problems and look for some new solutions. If we, you know, level off or, or hit a trough, then um, uh, we may not have quite as many opportunities. That's been the concern. This economy has been going so well. Who? I mean, I mean, I think it. just the other day I heard it, it hit, it's been the best it's been in this good span mm -hmm. for the longest time since the Nixon administration. Mm -hmm. So, you know, are we setting ourselves up maybe for like a big fall or something? Not, not that I'm trying to predict that. Well, they say that. it is the longest peacetime, uh, you know, s span of prosperity. And uh, I think what, what we're seeing, though, that is a little uh, scary is that the, uh, the old benchmarks of how you measure uh, profitability and, and uh, investor confidence and all that just seem to have been thrown into a cocked hat. And, and, uh, just looking at what's happening on the high-tech stocks mm -hmm. on the market and, you know, my fortunes being made and lost overnight. These are kind of exciting times, but they're a little, a little frightening, too. And, you know, you're, it probably can't go on forever, but every time everybody thinks it's going to stop, it, it 
mm -hmm. makes another sure. dash. So yeah, well, you know, it comes back to what I was saying a little bit before about to the technology, and that's really, you know, of course, all these tech companies heating the economy. If you just look in the Super Bowl, what are what were like 90% of the ads for dot coms, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which is I think it's good in a way, but. It's also caused, you know, in Atlanta, what was it last year, the day trader who, who yeah, killed, himself. killed himself because of the stresses of the... You know, economy. one of the things it has created is uh, a, a problem with sales taxes. Uh, as more and more people shop on the, on the web, if you will, um, we have a situation where states, there's a federal moratorium on it right now where you can't collect sa sales taxes on anything sold over the web. But you can see where uh, states will be losing a lot of revenue and traditional merchants will be put at a serious mm -hmm. disadvantage. So that is something we're going to have to come to grips with. It'll probably have to be a federal solution. Well, uh, Governor Ridge, um, I just heard last week, wants to uh, maybe do a tax holiday for people to buy their personal computers. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, obviously, I mean, it's. I think it's so hard to do anything in this day and age without some type of technology. What do you think about the tax holiday? Well, I, you know, I haven't had a chance to see, I haven't seen that proposal. I did, I heard about it mm -hmm. probably much as you did, but I'd like to see the details of it before I make a decision. But Ford Motor Company, I think, just came out the other day right. and announced they're giving every employee a, a computer and, $5 and, internet and online, some online time. Yeah, and, and the idea is that if they use it at home, they'll be more proficient mm -hmm. and more comfortable using it at work. There's probably some logic there. Yeah. Well, that's technology, uh, good and bad, so maybe I have to revoke some of the bad <laughs> comments I said before. Well, no, I agree with you about some of the isolation of it, but I, I happen to love email, and I use it yeah. a lot in my office, and, and uh, it, it's an easy way, way for people. But that's not way to talk to people. No, it's not, and you're right. There's no substitute for face-to-face -face right. interaction is really important. Um, all right, moving away from the, the whole technology thing. Tell well, you, for okay. one, one other thing I wanted to say, and that is... Um, you know, we've been into, uh, I've been very active in tele telephone competition mm, right. on the local level. I've intervened at the courts and at the Public Utility Commission mm -hmm. trying to get local telephone competition in place so you can pick your local provider much the way you do your long distance provider to try to get costs down and services improved. But one of the things that makes it so complicated is I don't know how important telephones are going to be, uh, mm -hmm. you know, 10 years down the road with, a, yeah, you know, with cellular true. and, and, uh, uh, satellite and you know all the in, all the new innovations that are coming in. We may be regulating a dinosaur here, and right. uh, it, it's just so hard to to keep up. And, and talking to some people in the business in the television business about the future of television, you know they've they've expressed concerns to me about wanting to go in this business because you know what, it may change. I mean there may not be the the cameras that that are in, taking these pictures of us. It may not be like this. We may not have a studio that we're yeah, airing at a certain right. time because it may all be done on the internet or or this one one thing that homogenizes everything. I'm trying to buy a new television <laughs> set and I'm completely confused over the new digital right. and, and I don't know what to buy and I'll probably just stay where I years, am. <laughs> in a few years, you know, with everything going digital Well, now. if you use that as an excuse for not doing anything, I mean, the right. technology is always changing, right. so you do have to bite the bullet and get into the game sooner right. or later or into the pool, but... Uh, it is confusing. Yes. Um, okay. Maybe take us through what your normal day is. I always like to ask <laughs> these people because I know that for any of us it doesn't exist. But maybe what's your your I guess that's one of the day. things I love about this job is that that it, it there are no uh, cookie cutter days. Uh -huh. they're, they're all very different. But the pattern when we're in session uh, is is that typically we are in session Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in Harrisburg. So I usually leave Sunday. Uh, Sunday late afternoon, early evening, drive to Harrisburg. Uh, I get into my office Monday morning and uh, we usually are in session at 2. So that gives me Monday morning to meet with my staff, sure. read my mail, uh, get through everything that's on my desk. We typically caucus every day that we have session. And by that I mean that the 30 Republicans in the Senate and the 20 Democrats mm -hmm. each meet with their own respective groups and um, review the calendar for the week, uh, the strategies, the priorities, uh, and uh, and so usually we caucus, we go into session, we vote on the floor. Uh, there are committee meetings, and I'm on six different committees, and those are usually scheduled on the days that we're that we're there. There are also hearings, uh, which will take up a good amount of your time. And then you have constituent meetings, lobbyist meetings. There's a line of people outside your door who are trying to catch <laughs> five minutes of your time, you know, on on every topic from. Uh, uh, tax reform to motorcycle helmets to you know right. you do name it yeah. uh, they they want to talk about it and that's what I love about the job is the huge range of issues yeah sure okay um, we're gonna sneak a break in here come back.
talk a little bit more about things going on in Harrisburg with uh, State Senator Mary Jo White after this. In the Clarion Mall, whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. With our newly expanded shoe and accessory department, you're surely to find that special touch to enhance that new outfit. And if you have a fashion question, our experts are here to help. That's Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall, just off exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. Sunday from noon till 5. It's not just about planning. It's about living and long-term relationships that outweigh short-term gains. At it's investing, it's about knowing you. My every hope, my life, my world, it all begins with a dream. Edward Jones, investing in you and your dreams. In Clarion, see Gary Martin, located on Main Street, phone 226-7896. has a rubber arm. If education is important to you, talk to your child's school about raising academic standards. Call 1-800-38-BE-SMART for a free booklet and be a big league parent. We're back, talking during the break, uh, here with State Senator uh, Mary Jo White. And it is that time of year, the springtime, the budget Time. Well, yes, what's going on with time. that in Harrisburg? Well, as you know, the governor gives his budget message, uh, which is this week, and then uh, that is sort of a kickoff for the budget process. And what happens is that the state, uh, the Senate Appropriation Committee, and the House Appropriation Committee hold separate uh, hearings that run oh, basically for two or three weeks, where every department or agency that has a significant budget that's part of that big budget, mm -hmm. uh, comes in and, and has to defend it. You ask them about, you know, why is it so much? Uh, why is this, you know, about their priorities, about what they need uh, to justify essentially that budget or to even justify why it isn't bigger or, you know, <laughs> it's, it's your chance to really question virtually every department of state government. And this will be my fourth budget and I will say this has been probably the single greatest or learning experience that I've had in government because if you want to really learn how it all fits together, you know, follow the money, as mm -hmm. they say, and, and watch how, where, how the priorities are developed, and it, it's really very, very educational. Then after that's done, um, you, each member then has the chance to uh, put into the hopper their recommendations for change, mm -hmm. and then leadership of the House and the Senate, both Republican and Democrat, get together and kind of hammer out the final document. Something uh, that's been playing big into the, the budget issue and money issue has been this tobacco settlement oh, yeah. this year. And um, th there was something I pulled from the paper, must have been last week. Um, I'll just quote, this is a Post-Gazette article, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. State Senator Allison Sh Schwartz of mm -hmm. Philadelphia, Democrat from Philadelphia, campaigning in McKees Rocks, criticized part of Governor Regis' plan for spending Pennsylvania's $11.3 billion share of the national tobacco settlement, complaining it didn't do enough for the state's uninsured and underinsured children. Maybe. A, a, Thoughts on what she said, or, or what you think maybe well, she spent that money? Well, uh, Allison Schwartz, of course, is is running for Senate against right. uh, uh, Rick Santorum, so I wouldn't expect her to have any very nice things <laughs> to say about the governor's program. Uh, but she has been uh, fairly consistently uh, a supporter of, of this kind of initiative. Um, I don't think it has been de determined exactly how all the tobacco money will be spent, but I know my preference will be to focus it on health care mm -hmm. and not to fritter it away. I also would like to see it put into a trust fund where we spend only the, uh, the, the revenue from the trust so that it's there you know, forever to deal with Pennsylvania right. health care needs, particularly those related to smoking-related diseases. But as those disappear, hopefully, or diminish um, other kinds of, of real health care needs so that we're making our people healthier. Right. Um, talking about this, uh, this, the Senate campaign, Rick Santorum uh, going for the Republican nomination, the incumbent, and 
uh, quite a few uh, going f uh, for the, the Democratic. Um, I know yeah. that um, uh, there were only I believe, two women in it, Allison Sch Schwartz and uh, Margolis Mavinci. I think she's and dropped she's out. Yeah, yeah, so now it's just Allison. And I read in the Sunday paper, I believe um, the, the Emily Foundation, or I'm not sure what it was, gave Allison Schwartz well, the nomination, but she's the only woman. So. Well, that's, it, it, that, that stands for early money is like yeast. That's how they got <laughs> the name of that. And the idea was to come up with money for female candidates. So uh, although I have never, uh, they've never given me anything, I, I suspect they give to Democrats a lot more than they give to Republicans. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that, that's not surprising that that foundation would right. endorse her and give her funding. Um, and also the state uh, Democratic uh, Party, the committee, um, came out and w did not endorse any of the Democratic candidates, basically said, let's let the voters decide. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's kind of interesting. Well, that's not uh, unusual. A lot of times in primaries, the party will do that, mm -hmm. particularly ones with a lot of, of contenders. And, you know, let the voters decide mm -hmm. instead of weighing in and... and uh, uh, putting your thumb on the scale, as it were. So, uh, typically in primaries, it, it is an open primary. So, uh, w w any any thoughts on the race in general? I, I think it's going to be a pretty interesting race. You have a lot of people who, who who don't like Rick Santorum, and you have a lot of people who really do like Rick Santorum. I mean, he's going to have the the. He always behind. gets he gets very high positives and high negatives, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean that's just his personality, and that's the kind of guy he is. And then there's this big middle piece. Mm -hmm where it's hard to say where it will go. Uh, you know, obviously I'm a Republican and I would like to see Rick Santorum uh, stay in his job because I think he's doing a good job. I like some of his ideas on Social Security and protecting the Social Security Fund. And I think he's been pretty aggressive. I have seen him, quite frankly, in the district a lot. I mean, he's been in Clarion uh, here where we visited the uh, uh, the New Bethlehem uh, peanut butter plant. We've been to the glass plant. I mean, he really likes to go out and visit uh, uh, manufacturing facilities in his district and he usually calls the local uh, political person and invites them to go along and so I, I think he's very hands-on and um, I, I know the Democrats see him as vulnerable I guess we'll see yeah I, I in fact I've read that actually in national papers um, whenever anything goes on in this race specifically they'll say against the vulnerable uh, re freshman Republican mm -hmm. well they've certainly targeted him yeah. you know and and uh, and I think a freshman, that's sort of the way it goes. You expect mm -hmm. them to come at you, you know, right. because you're not, you haven't been there long enough to really be entrenched. Uh, but that didn't happen in my case. I'm a freshman. I have no opposition. <laughs> so. All right. So that should be uh, an interesting race. Um, the other thing that's been big out of Harrisburg, I keep hearing about it, is what's going on with all these state legislators who mm. are running into people or, or you know, what, with, I mean, there was a laundry list. I remember talking about it on this show. Um, Back in September, the, I believe the Pittsburgh Tribune Review ran a list of, of, of things, charges against a, a lot of state representatives. Um, I think that would, is unusual. I mean, do you find that unusual? I, I guess I do. I mean, I've only been in, I'm just entering my, my fourth year of a four-year term, and certainly uh, what's happening now is, is unprecedented in my rather mm -hmm. limited experience. Uh, you know, in the past, there have been legislators that get in trouble of one sort or another because we're probably... Uh, pretty representative of the general population, uh, but this latest, uh, it just seems like we've got a lot going mm -hmm. on at the same time, and they're all over the place, uh, House, Senate. Sure. Uh, um, but, I, but I've seen a general uh, unwillingness to censure them. Or Well, I can't speak for the House. I can only speak for the Senate. Right. To the best of my knowledge, we have only one right, issue uh, going on in the Senate, and that would be Senator right, Slocum's. Slocum. And uh, I did not vote not to censure. What happened is we came into session and the D's had their censure resolution already drafted with the penalty. The D being the yeah, and it, it was all spe spelled out. Well, I don't think it's up to the minority party to decide what the punishment should be. I think it should be a bipartisan decision mm -hmm. as to whether and how you censure. Uh, so they needed to suspend the rules to introduce that and, and I voted with all my coll Republican colleagues not to suspend the rules. Not because I was saying no censure, but I'm saying, well, wait a minute, we need to be part of this process too. You know, you don't get to decide mm -hmm. how it's all done. And I think the thing that complicates Senator Slocum's situation is, number one, these are misdemeanors, and number two, they occurred prior to his being in the Senate. And, and the only, I just want to see that there's some essential fairness here uh, where he's concerned, because at the time I was being asked to vote on that, I hadn't seen what he pled to. I mean, all I knew is they were, uh, it was called negligent dumping, but I hadn't seen anything about what he supposedly did. Um, 
and so I, I think I want to see a little more fairness in the process and I want us to decide as a matter of policy are we going to censure people for misdemeanors that occurred before they were in the Senate? You know, recognizing that people have domestic disputes, right. they have driving uh, sure. problems, they have, you know, whatever. Um, I, I just think we need to, to be fair and consistent in how we do this. Um, the, the other one that's, that I see something in the paper about almost every day, we haven't seen too much about uh, Senator Slocum, um, but is State Representative um, Thomas Druce, who um, was in his, his home district, I believe, and he, um, I guess he was just driving along in his Jeep Cherokee. He ran into something he thought it was. Actually, it happened in Harrisburg. Oh, it did? Oh, it, okay, you're right, mm -hmm. because he went back to the Capitol and the mm -hmm. police did not see that. Um, and he, he ran into something. He, he just thought it was a stop sign, I guess, at the time, and it turned out to be a human. Um, and there have been people saying, well, he's covering it up. Uh, uh, you know, he, he, he knew he had someone and he was just trying to flee. Um, I realize that's not, you're, you're in the Senate and that is in the House, but um, any, any thought on, on that whole matter? You know, I guess my feeling on, on that, as well as on Senator Slocum's situation, is that I think that's what courts are for, to deal with mm. these kinds of issues. And I question whether I, as a legislator, in a political context, should be deciding what the appropriate punishment is for this person. I want them to get their day in court, their due process, their, you know, all the protections that we built into the criminal justice system. And, and I think that's really the appropriate place to do it. But should things. someone who's, who's representing me and, and making well, laws and for me... And that's the issue. I, I, if, if the crime uh, ultimately turns out, if there is a conviction, and if the crime goes to you know, the, the trustworthiness and the morality of the person uh, in, in the job, then I think, yeah, the, it, it is legitimate to take a look at it and ask some questions. Okay. Let's, um, let's move off of, the, of that subject, everything going on. It's a there. tough one. It, it really it is. is. I, and it's, it's, been in the, it's been in the news so much. Um, and, and I, it, see, I, I'm still harping on it. <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't see a whole lot of action on it, and I think that's what is bothering constituents, or maybe there is, but at least it's perceived that there isn't. And I think that's what's... Um, well, the perceptions people. really do have a way of driving this. Right. And, uh, you know, my, my feeling is it has moved pretty fast. I mean, the first we heard of any censure thinking, I mean, he, he just pled uh, within the past month, I think, or past couple of weeks, mm -hmm. actually. Um, the, you know, he hasn't been sentenced yet. The process is still moving through the courts. Uh, it has now been referred to the Senate Committee on Ethics. Uh, they are meeting, I think this, they've met or are meeting to set up a, a, a schedule for hearings. Senator Slocum has asked that it be public, so I, yeah. I think the public is going right. to see what's happening and I guess they can decide if they agree or disagree. All right, so much more stuff I want to talk about, but we are out of time, out of, of time. course, but you're going to be over on my radio show on uh, WCUC in a couple of weeks. We'll let you know about that in the weeks coming up. And uh, once again, thanks for joining us. We'll be back right after this. are showing in their boring programming. Only one station is bringing news coverage closer to home. Now a story you'll hear first on 5. Every Tuesday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m., join the area's news leader, TV5 News. Tune in for the latest in local, regional, state, and national news. Plus, with our newspaper exchange partner, the Clarion News, teaming up to bring news coverage closer to home every Tuesday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m. You left the TV on. Shame. Wasting energy big time. I was watching a tape of my favorite movie, but then I had to go upstairs to iron your pants. You left the TV and the VCR on. Double shame. Please don't waste energy. It's a positive solution that will reduce air pollution. <laughs> Thank you. This is the story about a group of kids who volunteer. Do something nice for someone. We fix stuff. Did some art projects with the kids. We fixed up his house. We worked in the woods. Cleaned up the park. Did something for the planet. We just did it. No other reason. And you know what? It was great. At first, they didn't know each other. Well, that didn't last long. This guy is really funny. Me? Ace are my new friends. Are you into it? Call 4-H or check out our website at areyouintoit.com.
Welcome back to Feedback, and it's time to say goodbye. We want to thank once again State Senator Mary Jo White for joining us. Join us next week on Feedback. Uh, 7.30 is the time we will have uh, Jason from MTV's The Real World. I did an interview with him uh, last week, and we'll have, we will air that for you. Also, don't forget to join me on my new radio That's show good, every Wednesdays at uh, what is it, 6 a.m. on uh, 91.7 WCUC. Uh, we will see you next week. Have a good week.